everybody. I know it's been a while since I made a video, but here I am now. I have three things I want to talk about, so I'm just going to list them, and then I'm going to discuss them in further detail. The uh, first thing is I have a new uh, channel here on YouTube. It's called Molecular BioVids, so there's a link in the video description area of this video. Uh, the second thing is I have uh, put together a video on endogenous retroviruses, and I've uploaded it to that new channel. The third thing is uh, I have a website where I've put together a response to some of the pertinent sections of uh, Ray Comfort's introduction for On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. So uh, the first thing, um, I made this channel a while back, a number of months ago, for the purpose of, of uploading the video that I finally put together. The second thing, um, the video that I've made, like I said, it's on endogenous retroviruses, and if you're thinking, well, oh, I've already heard some information on ERVs, I already know a thing or two about them, you still might want to check out this video. Uh, most articles on the internet, certainly videos here on YouTube, only discuss the first layer of ERV evidence. Um, this one discusses the other two as well. Um, this, vid this video series, it's a video series of, of two videos, and the first one goes into great depth on, on the, the functions of retroviruses. It, it establishes an understanding of ERVs and how that relates to, to common ancestry. Um, and then the second one, like I said, it covers three layers. The first layer being uh, ERVs shared in orthologous loci and uh, the nested hierarchies that they're arranged in. But it also covers the other two layers. Uh, that would be uh, long-term repeat discontinuity ratios and the uh, sharing of mutations and the uh, nested hierarchies that they're arranged in. Uh, I think the, the reasons why the, uh, just the distributional nested hierarchies are, are generally discussed uh, is because most ERVs are uh, solo LTRs, the long-term repeats have recombined at the loss of the genetic information in between them, so for the most part, all you can get is the first layer of evidence out of, out of most of them. But there are still uh, quite a large number of, uh, of full-length ERVs, and um, that's when you can get the other two layers. It, unlike the distributional nest hierarchies, where I'm only aware of one actual deviation uh, from them, and, and there are mechanisms to account for that, like allelic segregation and uh, insertion in duplicate sections of DNA that have undergone homologous recombination. Um, but unlike that, with these other two layers, there, there is more deviation from them. So that's probably why they're not uh, generally discussed. But the fact that there are any patterns in them at all in those other two layers um, is very powerful evidence, especially given that they're, uh, they're reliant on completely different mechanisms. So. Um, I, feel, I think it's very important to mention them as well, and to, I do mention them, I, I do discuss them in this video series. So on to the third thing I wanted to discuss. Uh, I think we're probably all aware by now that Ray Comfort has written a 50-page introduction to On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. So what I've done is I've written a uh, response or responses to uh, some of the pertinent sections um, of, of his 50 pages. It should probably come as no surprise to anybody that uh, the majority of those 50 pages are completely irrelevant to the veracity of the evolutionary model. Uh, they're, they're totally irrelevant to the question of how well does the evolutionary model describe reality. Uh, the, things like uh, the opinions of Hitler, the opinions of Darwin, uh, his views on, on race, his views on women, all those things are irrelevant. In fact, Ray himself admits that it's irrelevant. Uh, he, he preemptively uh, responds to a question that he poses as if it was posed by someone else, claiming that someone actually did pose that to him uh, in his 50-page introduction, where he, he basically admits that uh, all these things are irrelevant to the veracity of, of the evolutionary model. And then, of course, he goes on to continue to talk about these irrelevant things. But anyway, that's why I'm not responding uh, to, to any of those. Uh, I disagree with Ray in most of what he says in these extraneous portions of, of his response, but even if he were right, it, it really has nothing to do with, with evolution. There is a portion of it, though, uh, like I said, that is pertinent to the veracity of the evolutionary model, and I've responded to, uh, to a lot of that. Uh, most of it has to do with my area of interest, which is uh, genetics and molecular biology and, and things like that. So uh, I, I've responded to those sections. Um, I, I do also have some portions that, that don't have to do with that. Uh, I, on my response to, to his, his claims about vestigial structures, um, I, I have some examples of vestigial anatomical configurations like uh, the, the pathophrenic nerve or uh, the left and right recurrent or geal nerves. I also include examples of uh, vestigial reflexes like uh, the contraction of rectoris pilorum in response to cold or fear or anger. 
Uh, so it's, I don't just stick to, to genetics and molecular biology, but for the most part I do. Um, and again, I have this on my website, so you can check all that stuff out. Uh, the stuff that I'm going to be doing for uh, molecular biovids here on YouTube is, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, as far as I've planned anyway, is just going to be continuing to take things from a website that I've written and putting them into a video format and uh, uploading them. So if you like that kind of thing, then you should probably subscribe to Molecular Biovids. Uh, that's about it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.